Hi, and welcome to the DIN Cloud webinar on addressing security with desktop as a service. My name is Ali Din, the uh, Chief Marketing Officer here at DIN Cloud. Uh, I wanted to uh, thank you for your time in watching this uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, two main topics. Uh, one is how security impacts business, and then, of course, how to uh, resolve it using one approach, which is desktops as a service. Uh, and part of this uh, impact on business is going through a little bit of the landscape. Uh, so we'll start off with what Gartner uh, has said around the amount of spending that's going on. And this is really indicative of the amount of uh, threats coming into organizations. Uh, it's definitely a very different kind of environment uh, than it was even just a few years ago. Uh, so ransomware, so one of the main uh, topics that's been hitting the headlines is around ransomware. And unfortunately, it's not just a temporary phase. It's something that's expected to get worse. Uh, whether we've seen it particularly in healthcare uh, or in other areas as well. Uh, there's a number of these breaches, as you can see on this slide, uh, 85 breaches attempted every year. And another important statistic on there is that one-third of these is successful. Uh, so this is something that uh, we'll dive into a little bit more here uh, as we look into uh, on this next slide what the impact of these uh, ransomware attacks are. So out of uh, one in six, there's at least a day worth of downtime that results from these. And uh, most of the time, there was at least one hour of downtime. So if you look at this for a single individual, uh, that's one hour of downtime for them in most cases. But if it impacts more than one individual, you have potentially a department or a division uh, that's impacted by this. And it, it's more of a nuisance because you can see that these are small demands, and so the cost to repair it versus just to pay it off, it, it, there's kind of a difficult choice there. Uh, you can also see that besides healthcare, financial services are also having to deal with this uh, type of a threat. So let's take a look at what one way is of what uh, we can do to avoid uh, these threats coming into the landscape. And what you want to take a look at is how you can address end user productivity, making sure that the files that may get impacted by ransomware, uh, the applications that they may uh, tap into you know, in terms of database records and applications that are dependent on those, that those are in a pristine or a state where you can uh, recover them very quickly and not be dependent on just that single copy that lies there. Now, a couple other examples of this are around data loss. So from a virtual perspective, uh, you know, a couple examples here we have is Equifax, uh, where uh, over 100 million people uh, data was, uh, was uh, breached. And then with Yahoo, it was not just that there were 3 billion plus uh, people whose data was compromised, but with the Verizon acquisition, uh, Yahoo actually lost over $300 million in their valuation uh, because of the uh, what Verizon detected here. So it, it's really something that uh, can happen virtually, but then also from a physical perspective, uh, there's a lot of uh, challenges as well. So if you look at the physical loss of data, uh, one of the websites that tracks this on a recurring basis is privacyrights.org. Uh, you can see that on the web, uh, on this uh, slide here. And they're citing over 7,000 data breaches uh, that have happened, uh, you know, over the last uh, decade or so. And out of these, uh, many times you're losing portable or physical devices as well. So again, let's take a look at some of the other ways that what we need to do to address this. And, and what you want to do is minimize really these files being lost either through physical or virtual mechanisms, whether it's ransomware, uh, but you really need to address this because it's a corporate risk uh, and it's also impacting end user productivity. 
So let's take a look at a couple more examples here. Uh, now, Ponemon Institute, uh, again, another research firm, has broken down these percentages, and I'll let you take a look at them on the slide. But one of the key points here is that the loss uh, from cyber attacks is $300 per employee. So if you multiply that out by uh, the number of employees you have at your organization, that gives you an idea of, of just the employee level of loss that you're incurring. Uh, if we look at some of these uh, data losses a little bit more, uh, you know, dive down into them from uh, the prior slide, let's take a look at some of the statistics on that. So basically every minute uh, a laptop is stolen uh, from a smartphone perspective is, you know, quite a, a large number, 70 million smartphones lost each year. And some of these are company-issued phones uh, or devices as well. And uh, one of the other stats that I wanted to point out here is the cost of the laptop uh, is, is, you know, has to be factored in. It's not just the data loss, but now you have to replace these devices as well. So it's kind of a double hit um, besides all the end user productivity. So again, one more time, uh, what organizations need to do to deal with this is find ways to rapidly recover from threats like ransomware because it, it's, it's quite difficult to always prevent them. So you also want to have a plan around how do you recover if you do have an end user that gets infected. So you can do that by going through snapshots. You can do a restoration on devices uh, you know, prior to a point where you know that the data was more pristine. So let's now actually dive into uh, this, uh, now that we've kind of talked about the, uh, the state of security and we've talked about what organizations need to do, uh, let's talk about how to secure your data using desktop as a service. So just do a quick 30-second uh, plug on DinCloud itself. Our company is a, a digital transformation provider, and we do this through three different ways. We have a DinCloud platform, which can actually provide you with desktop as a service in multiple different uh, mo uh, deployment models, different uh, layers of security, as well as uh, the actual design and architecture that we provide. So we give a lot of options to customers. We also work with customers on their third-party SaaS applications to help them with administration, management, configuration of those applications, and we also work on legacy systems. Uh, again, providing the operations behind the scenes uh, for them in the back office. Uh, DinCloud has been around since 2011, and we've always provided uh, hosted virtual desktops or desktop as a service. Uh, we now look at that really as a hosted workspaces as a category because you can have applications, you can have desktops, you can have sessions as well. So again, a lot of flexibility in the number of choices you have. And we offer this through a network of value-added resellers and managed service providers that can also provide industry expertise as well as technical expertise. Uh, from, from a DIN Cloud perspective, in terms of differentiators, there's a number of things that uh, I wanted to point out before we go into some of the security-specific items. So one is transparent pricing or flat rate pricing. So rather than paying by the hour, paying by the minute, uh, or even uh, by the second, uh, we provide a flat rate because most of our customers are usually using their equipment on a day-to-day -day basis and they're not uh, turning things off and on uh, based on different types of projects. Uh, that may only last for a few hours. So uh, that's one important thing to keep your costs much more predictable. And then we have a purpose-built cloud, uh, which we'll be talking about in just a moment. Uh, and then the other two things at the bottom, uh, the, the two icons you see around ease of use and customer experience, these are very important to us uh, in addition to the security side. So we want to make sure that the experience of our customers is seamless. And we do that by also providing ease of use through our console or our uh, orchestration platform, which is called DIN Manage, and that really allows customers to, or their partners to spin up, spin down, uh, and really have uh, find, uh, very uh, detailed control over their environment. So that's a very important aspect of, of what we see as security is having that confidence that you have full control of, over the environment. And then lastly, I wanted to talk about uh, security. 
And then for our security measures, we've taken uh, quite a multi-tiered approach to security. And for that, I've actually asked uh, Farhan Mirza. He's our Senior Director of Engineering. And he's going to uh, go over a couple more of these details. Thank you, Ali. Um, this is Farhan. So I'll, I'll uh, start with the data centers. Um, Dim Cloud is um, currently hosting with Equinix. Equinix has multiple data centers around the world, and we have the ability to use any of their facilities. And um, it's uh, Equinix data centers are considered uh, one of the safest data centers. Um, all all the data centers are tier plus, tier three plus data centers, and um, they are certified for SSE. 16 SOC type type two type two and SOC two type two um, certifications, which are uh, really important when um, our customers are looking at the securities and um, um, they're trying to shape their security policies and um, also looking at uh, what uh, kind of compliance they they need in order to satisfy uh, the requirements. So uh, moving on uh, to um, how we provide security. Um, so uh, cybersecurity layers, uh, this, this slide basically goes over um, all the layers that uh, DenCloud um, provides uh, to, to make sure that um, customer workloads are secure. The way that we do it is that we've uh, looked at each layer of uh, the cloud stack and um, figured out how do we secure it, right? So we're going to start with the networking layer. We provide uh, dedicated VLANs. Uh, this ensures that all the network traffic is uh, restricted to a particular VLAN. Uh, then we provide side-to-side -side VPN for IPsec uh, encryption. And on top of it, we customers have the ability to also use MPLS network. This ensures the workloads are encrypted. Uh, coming on to encryption, not only provide encryption for data in transit, but also for data at rest at, at the storage layer. Uh, perimeter security. Is, is very critical. We make sure that uh, each customers have their own dedicated firewalls, so uh, which is um, which is there to make sure that uh, their security policies are there in a centralized place and they can manage as through our uh, orchestration tool. Then manage. Uh, we provide um, IP reputation filter through Threat Stop, and the way that it works is that it filters all the traffic coming into uh, Den Cloud at the edge. Uh, ThreatStop knows all uh, the bad IPs, all the threats which are um, currently, uh, all the attacks which are currently going on, and it just stops all the all the traffic right there before it even reaches your uh, workloads. Malware protection comes in by default. We make sure all the virtual machines and all customer workloads are protected through um, either Windows Defender and customer the ability to use third-party tools as well. Similarly, uh, we provide snapshots and data recovery. This is extremely critical um, in cases where customers have, uh, you know, lost their data either through some kind of a, um, you know, a cybersecurity attack or you know malware or um, other or you know just in case where uh, they've deleted some important critical files and uh, they want the ability to resource the data. That's where the snapshots, which we provide by default. Um, we, we can utilize it. Customers can simply re request us to either restore the data or particular files, and um, that's that's extremely uh, critical in, in terms of the the security of the customer's workload. And um, uh, network isolation, once again, this makes sure that uh, um, your workloads are running in an isolated network. You know, you have your own uh, security policies in place. It doesn't interfere with it's it's not a shared network it's everything is dedicated that it from um, the dedicated vlans to um, virtual firewalls and uh, your own uh, security policies coming to the physical security um, our data centers are all tier 3 plus data centers we've got um, guards and man traps in place so these data centers are always at 24 by 7. They're manned, and um, there is always um, a security present in the data centers. We have uh, biometric access, not just to our cages, but 
we have uh, kinetic digital logs placed even on individual racks. Um, so if, if somebody goes in, they won't be able to access the the physical servers or storage layer because uh, even those are protected. Only certain people have access to it. On on top of that, we make sure our cameras are monitoring. We have uh, 24 by 7 monitoring available both um, to Ecmanex and also to our own individual cameras inside the inside the rack and cages as well. And in case of um, uh, we have the ability to go uh, uh, through the recordings and um, for any for any incident and uh, see what was going on at any uh, particular time. Thanks, Rahan. And one of the things that uh, I'd like to point out here is some of the type of coverage. So you may be wondering some of the background on DIN Cloud. And so just as an example, from an industry coverage perspective, uh, Gartner, uh, probably the, uh, the largest uh, research firm that covers technology uh, and, and works with uh, thousands of clients, has uh, been tracking DIN Cloud for a number of years. So we did a search and, and there's uh, over a dozen reports uh, that include DIN Cloud at Gartner. So if you have a Gartner subscription, uh, you're welcome to take a look at those. And then from a market perspective, uh, you can also see a number of uh, recognition awards uh, that we've uh, collected over the years. And this is uh, primarily thanks to partners and customers, of course, uh, giving us uh, kudos along the way. So again, thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, we wanted to make sure we uh, shared with you some of the things going on from a security landscape perspective and specifically how desktop as a service can help you address many of the security challenges that you're trying to address in your organization.